Our sponsor today is the most helpful book for anyone dealing with dog cancer, The Dog Cancer Survival Guide, written by Drs. Damian Dressler and co-author Dr. Susan Ettinger, also known as Dr. Sue Cancer Vet. Together, they outline the full-spectrum approach to dog cancer. It includes everything that has been shown to help your dog fight cancer, even strategies usually thought of as outside the box. That's the Dog Cancer Survival Guide. But vomiting, particularly if it goes along with other signs, so if the animal looks depressed or its gum color is pale or it seems uncomfortable or worse yet, if their belly looks distended, those are usually ones that we're going to get in right away, even if it's only one vomiting. If there's discomfort and a distended belly, that animal comes in right away. Welcome to Dog Cancer Answers, where we help you help your dog with cancer. Here's your host, James Jacobson. Hello, friend. Today, we are going to talk about a glamorous topic that most dog lovers are quite familiar with, vomiting. To help us figure out when vomiting is a concern and when it's just a bunch of stomach upset, we are joined once again by Dr. Nancy Reese. Dr. Nancy is a veterinarian with over 30 years of clinical practice experience, and she also boasts a master's degree in preventative veterinary medicine and a PhD in epidemiology. Dr. Nancy, thank you so much for being with us today. Thanks again. It's nice to be back. So we're talking about barf today, vomit, throw up. When do you call your vet? When should I panic if my dog throws up? So (laughs) funny question, because it seems like it would be such a straightforward answer. These things happen, call your vet. Mm -hmm. But I find there is so much subjectivity when people give a description of a dog's symptoms that it can be really hard to parse out whether it's an actual emergency or not. So I can think of a case, this isn't about vomiting, but literally we had on the same day, two people describe their dog's eye situation. And they sounded exactly the same on the phone. The dogs get there and one's a super minor condition and the other one is about to lose the eyeball. So Mm. it's so tough when you talk about a symptom as when it becomes an emergency. So if you are uncomfortable with the symptom that your dog is showing, then you should call. But that being said, vomiting is a super common thing in dogs. One time vomit, the dog got into something, threw up once. I'm not generally going to be concerned about that, but that same dog vomits three or four times in the same day, or he's looking uncomfortable. He's, you know, not wanting to move around or might even be moaning. That's a much bigger concern than always using the lab as an example of simple things, but a lab throws up and is still wagging his tail running around. That's not going to be an emergency. So how much vomiting is too much? You say three or four times. Is that sort of the thing like, oh, this is, this is an issue? I think that usually has me more concerned. If there's repeated bouts of- so one or two, not so much. Right, right. And then it might also depend on the length of time that this has been going on. So if mm. a dog has been vomiting once a day for two weeks, okay, obviously we need to do something about that because that's going on too long. But if it's once a day- but it's only happening once every other week. Again, it may not be as concerned. So it's the frequency and the duration of these sequential episodes that becomes more important or secondary signs. A dog that's vomiting and no longer wants to eat, that's usually a little bit more concern than a dog that vomits and is right back at its food bowl. Got it. Well, let's talk about the... This reminds me of our poop episode. Let's talk a little bit about some of the things that you can discover in the vomit. There's obviously different types of vomit. They look different. What do you look for? Right. So going back to the bloody poop talk, Mm -hmm. blood in the vomit, that's also another big concern because that could be something a bit more severe. So I definitely don't like to see dogs that have blood in their vomit. So looking for color is certainly important. Another thing about consistency There's quite a different list of causes for things that are regurgitated versus vomiting. Break that apart. What's the difference between those two? So yeah, in general, vomiting tend to worry about a little bit more than regurgitation. But again, regurgitation can actually have some 
bad things causing it underlying. So if the enamel is regurgitating frequently, that still is a big concern. But an occasional regurgitation, undigested food comes out, I usually don't worry. But vomiting, particularly if it goes along with other signs. So if the animal looks depressed or its gum color is pale or it seems uncomfortable or worse yet, if their belly looks distended, Mm -hmm. those are usually ones that we're going to get in right away. Even if it's only one vomiting, if there's discomfort and a distended belly, that animal comes in right away. What is the presumption with the distended belly? Uh, So either fluid filling up in there or something like bloat, which is an air-filled surgical emergency. And those are really dire cases. So oftentimes the history with that might be dry heaving with a Mm. big tight belly. And those animals come in as soon as possible and usually get referred down for surgery. So belly size, especially if it's a change. Now we get a lot of people that say their dog's abdomen is swollen. And then we ask, is this a new thing? And they say, no, it's always like that then we don't really worry about that as a, as an emergency sign. Got it. Well, in our online community, dogcancersupport.com, several people have noticed vomiting and they're concerned that vomiting is in a dog that is healthy, that maybe just because they're super cancer aware, does vomiting suggest that maybe there's a cancer problem? I would say there's probably more non-cancerous causes of vomiting mm-hmm. than cancer causes. So, you know, especially if it's just the intermittent thing, but again, not hard and fast rule, but I worry about cancers, particularly if we have a lot of weight loss and the animal's vomiting, that's, you know, getting into the trash, even if they're not eating for a couple of days, won't cause an animal to lose a lot of weight. It takes significant disease to lose a lot of weight. So cancer is always big when there's unexplained weight loss. Got it. You talked about bloat and you talked about, you know, things that could be super serious. And of course, this will only happen, you know, during non-business hours for veterinarians. Oh, absolutely. So is this considered an emergency? Is this something you want to go to the 24-7 clinic for? Or can you wait for a normal appointment? And how do you know which to do? So a lot of that does depend on knowing your dog. Again, if it looks uncomfortable and vomiting and that animal is really lying around, or it's been vomiting enough where it can be dehydrated, Mm. then yes, that is worth an emergency visit. Vomiting with diarrhea, they're going to get dehydrated twice as fast. So that's another case where, yes, an emergency visit is worthwhile. And what are the visual symptoms of dehydration? A couple of reasonable ways. It's a little hard in dogs versus cats, but you can kind of pick up the skin behind their shoulder blades And if you make a little tent and let it go, it should snap back immediately. If it goes a little slow, that's a sign of significant dehydration. You can also push on their gums. And if it feels kind of dry and tacky, that's another sign that they might be dehydrated versus a nice slobbery animal. It's going to be very moist. Sometimes if the dehydration gets bad enough, you'll start to see their eyes will be a little bit sunken and their their skin will look like it's kind of sticking to the underlying tissues instead of moving comfortably. We are going to take a short break here to pay some bills. And then when we come back, we will discuss how vomiting can be related to cancer. Stay tuned. I want to let you know about an important newsletter. It's called Dog Cancer News. Now, with a name like that, it is not for everyone. But if your dog has cancer, you will want to subscribe. That's because every issue features articles that will be helpful, such as low-carb dog cancer diet recipes, new clinical trials, financial resources to help pay for cancer care, information on supplements, and lots of other helpful info that your veterinarian may not know or have the time to share with you. Also, when you subscribe to Dog Cancer News, you will get a weekly update on the topics covered on this podcast, along with links and resources. So how much does Dog Cancer News cost? Well, today you can subscribe for free. It's our gift. For a limited time, you can get a full year subscription for free, no strings attached. Just go to this website to sign up for the newsletter now, dogcancernews.com. It takes less than 10 seconds to subscribe and it is totally free. Do it now at dogcancernews.com. 
let's go back to dogs that do have cancer, which is obviously a lot of folks who are listening to us now. Is vomiting a more urgent situation in a dog with cancer than an otherwise healthy dog? I would always take that as a more significant sign if we know the animal has cancer. Now, it might just be a matter of it's the medication they're being given, mm. and it might not be as serious. But if the animal is on side effect medication, so we're try to be preemptive with cancer treatments about giving anti-vomiting medications. So a dog that's on those and is vomiting, that's usually a significant concern because those medications should be suppressing it. And if it's a bad enough cause to overcome those medications, then it's definitely a bit of a worry. Because obviously a lot of chemotherapy drugs do, you know, oral chemotherapy they may be giving at home do have a potential for increasing nausea and vomiting. Absolutely. It's, sadly, it's one of the most common side effects. But if we're trying to be more preemptive and have medications on hand for that, you know, maybe on the days they get their chemo, they get anti-vomiting medications for a couple of days. So we, if you're not using the medications and the animal vomits, hmm. we might say, just give the anti-vomiting medication. Because <laughs> they give you the medicines, you know, which use this just in case, but it's like you have a whole pharmacopoeia right. sitting on your kitchen shelf and it's like, oh, okay, one more. So use it. It's it's not just there for window dressing. And these are called emetics, right? Is that what? Anti-emetics. Anti <laughs> well, you see why I'm not a veterinarian. Yeah. Okay, so anti <laughs> we, we do have emetics too, but we try not to use this. <laughs> <laughs> no one <laughs> induce vomiting. Okay, so these are anti-emetics. And what are some of the common ones that a vet would prescribe? Serenia is probably the biggest one. It has a pretty good mechanism for controlling vomiting associated with things like chemotherapy and other sources of, of nausea. We used to use Reglan or metoclopramide a lot. That doesn't seem to be as effective for vomiting as Serenia. So it's, there may be certain cases where that's desired, but in general, Serenia is a better one. And then Odansteron is another one. That's a human medication. I think the brand name might be Zofran, but that's another common anti-vomiting medication that's used. Are there any over-the-counter things that you can just have on hand to give your dog if, if you're seeing vomiting? We'll sometimes use things, I mean, the old things like uh, Pepto-Bismol mm -hmm. or Pepsid, some of the antacids. Mm -hmm. Those aren't true anti-vomiting, but they help maybe a little bit with nausea. So as a prelude to vomiting, there's often a nausea period, and those might have some benefits, but they're certainly not as effective for vomiting as something like Serenia. Got it. Now, because, you know, because I have a vet on the line, let me ask you this question. Uh, sometimes, not recently, but sometimes my dog in the morning during her morning walk when her belly was empty would vomit, but it was just sort of bile. It was just a little bit of yellow because there was nothing in her stomach, a cause for concern? Usually not. I mean, that, that we think that animals get acid reflux a lot mm -hmm. like people do. So they eat their dinner at night, and then they lie down for, you know, say 12 hours or so, and that acid can kind of leak up and irritate the esophagus. So first thing in the morning when they get up, they feel that irritation, and they'll do a little bit of that vomiting. So it's distressing, but usually not that concerning. And some different feeding regimes can sometimes help that, having a morning and evening feeding, right. or I've used uh, antacids or things like that to try to help prevent that. Well, my dog has figured out that if you do that, and then you do that in a day or two, then before you go for a walk, you get a treat, and then that settles the stomach. So she's trained me really well. So Absolutely. I think that's great, because as soon as that happens, she would just do it and then look up like, okay, I'm done. I'm fine. <laughs> so, <laughs> so really, again, as we've talked about on so many episodes of Dog Cancer Answers, it's important to know your dog. What else do we need to understand about vomiting? I guess another thing that we didn't mention that is often a, a concerning sign, if a dog is vomiting up water, so not the kind of dog that, again, going back to the, the lab that I use for my example for everything normal, if a lab goes, runs up to the bowl, drinks a ton of water and that comes out, not going to worry about that as much. But an animal that has drank water earlier and then starts throwing up that water that can be a sign that things are not, even water can't make it through the digestive tract. And that's that's usually a bad sign as well. So vomiting water, I definitely don't like unless it's just right after they just tanked up. Got it. 
Well, Dr. Nancy Reese, thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Thank you. It's always fun to talk about barf and poop. We cover the fun stuff here on Dog Cancer Answers. <laughs> Nothing but the best. And I want to thank you for listening today. So, if your dog just throws up once and is otherwise happy and seems fine, it's probably nothing to worry about. But if your dog throws up multiple times in a day or is also acting sick, well, then it is time to call a veterinarian. And while vomiting is not a common symptom of cancer, if your dog already has cancer, then throwing up can be a bit of a concern. So I want to thank you for joining us today, and I want to encourage you to subscribe to this show in your favorite podcast app or on YouTube. And of course, you can always visit us on our website at dogcanceranswers.com. Thank you for listening. I'm James Jacobson, and from all of us here at Dog Podcast Network, I'd like to wish you and your dog a very warm aloha. Thank you for listening to Dog Cancer Answers. If you'd like to connect, please visit our website at dogcanceranswers.com or call our listener line at 808-868-3200. And here's a friendly reminder that you probably already know. This podcast is provided for informational and educational purposes only. It's not meant to take the place of the advice you receive from your dog's veterinarian. Only veterinarians who examine your dog can give you veterinary advice or diagnose your dog's medical condition. Your reliance on the information you hear on this podcast is solely at your own risk. If your dog has a specific health problem, contact your veterinarian. Also, please keep in mind that veterinary information can change rapidly. Therefore, some information may be out of date. Dog Cancer Answers is a presentation of Maui Media in association with Dog Podcast Network. 